Check. Let's play some old games. Let's play some old games. I'm doing this for you. I don't, I don't know where I'm going. Check, check. Go, go. Ow, no. Go. No. Hey. Hi. Uh, so it's been two months since my last video. Uh, I apologize. We're officially in the Tynology Gaming set version three. Uh, it's never ideal to move three times in just over a year. So yeah, welcome back. I do a lot of other stuff besides just this channel. So I've been updating everywhere. Check the description for all my other stuff all around, especially on my Discord. If you're watching this video and you're not on the Discord, come hang out. We're doing some cool stuff. We're also working on a podcast that we're launching. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. Today, we are talking about this, the Retroid Pocket 2. I like it. It's a cool device for old games. Old games. Old games. I'm a huge fan of emulation when it works and when it's easy and it's not a freaking headache. So the Retroid Pocket 2 was high on my list of devices to handle my portable emulation desires. Like I have, I have PSPs, I have 3DSs, and I can do all sorts of stuff like that, but I have been really into the dedicated hardware of emulation devices. So I grabbed one. It didn't take that long to get here, actually. You can either go on like AliExpress or through Retroid, uh, or you can buy them on Amazon. I'll have a link below. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit more through Amazon, but you usually get it faster, so it's a trade-off. So the thing with emulation is though, is that it's never easy, it's never straightforward. It's like always kind of a pain. You have to put a lot of work into it beforehand. A lot of setting up and organizing and configuring and everything. And the Retroid Pocket 2 is no different, especially if you want it to be a seamless experience. And as you know, the emulation is kind of this gray area in terms of copyright and legality and everything so understandably you have to jump through some hoops to get everything working the way that you want the way that i want so i'm here to talk about making your retroid pocket 2 as user friendly as possible and some of the things that you'll have to do to get it to that point there are a ton of videos here's one where you can optimize your emulators and your settings to get the best performance out of this device because it runs games really well. 3D games, you do need to configure for certain platforms and stuff like that. So it's, it gets a little technical and I'm not going into that today, but I'm talking about making it look cool. I have my logo on it. I can make it launch my launcher. I can make it look like a Nintendo Switch. That's my default theme. So we'll get into all that. Hang out, grab a drink, grab a snack. So this is the Retroid Pocket 2. It is a reasonably priced, moderately powered handheld emulation device that actually runs on Android, which is kind of unique for these type of devices. Usually they run on Linux or some type of custom OS. And this does have this Retroid OS as an option. It's like dual boot option. Don't use it. There's plenty of downsides. So the device has emulators built in and it uses a bunch of free Android emulators. If you're familiar with Android, you know that there's also paid emulators that a lot of people really recommend. And I have not gone through to analyze that with most of the free emulators. With all the older systems, they all run on RetroArch. Even Game Boy Advance has its own separate RetroArch install that is more optimized for Game Boy Advance games. The PS1, Dreamcast N64 though get a little wonky and so when I was running the basic PS1 emulator some games worked flawlessly some games were super choppy and I know that you can optimize settings for different games so just understand that you're gonna be doing some tinkering depending on what type of games you're gonna play so the systems that you can play on this Retroid Pocket 2 are Atari 5200, Vetrix, MSX, Lynx, NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, SNES, PC Engine, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis or Mega Drive, a Sega 32X, Sega CD, Sega Game Gear, Final Burn Alpha, MAME, Wonderswan, Wonderswan Color, Neo Geo Pocket, Neo Geo Pocket Color, Game Boy Advance, PlayStation, PSP, 
N64 and Dreamcast. Now, most of those consoles, it runs flawlessly. The way RetroArch is set up is perfect, at least for everything that I've had to use it for, which works totally fine. There's also a few standalone emulators that you can go into the menu and launch. They seem to also work fine, but some quirks with this. The D-pad's in a kind of strange spot down here in the corner. It's not that annoying, but it's something to note. If you're gonna play a lot of 2D games, you should note that that's not the most ideal location for it. I do like that it has four shoulder buttons. They actually call it LR and ZL, ZR, like the Switch. Actually, the button layout is identical to the Switch. A few other things, the right analog stick is not a normal Joy-Con style analog stick. Neither of them click in. The right one is actually kind of that old PSP style where it just slides inside this little pocket, which is, I don't like that. It serves its purpose. The other thing is, it's Android, and so there's a lot of touch controls in the operating system, which there's no touch screen on this device. So you have to hold the home button and it turns the whole thing into a draggable cursor to use the touch controls, which is slightly annoying, especially since some emulators want to use touch controls because it's an Android device. That's another thing that you just have to get used to. Other than that, the controls are pre-configured for the emulators already, and the setup is not all that bad. Also, the face buttons feel good. All the buttons feel really good, aside from that right analog stick. It's only gripe control-wise, and the location of the D-pad is slightly less than ideal, but hasn't really bugged me that much. I like the four shoulder buttons, because even if I'm not gonna play a ton of PS1 games on this, if I want to, it's there, even if I don't ever use it, and they feel good. So I really like that they just threw them on here. Okay. So the software, it's Android 6. I think now you can get it coming out with Android 8.1, Android 8, something like that. I haven't upgraded. I got mine late last year when I was planning on doing this video and never got around to it. So one thing I should note is that Android has launchers, which are basically programs that you can default as your home software. And so this device, I loaded on a launcher called Pegasus and I actually don't have a default to my home button because I still like having the Android interface for other features. But what I did was I cleaned up the home screen. I got rid of everything there, put on my logo as the background and then just have one icon for the Pegasus launcher. And the Pegasus launcher uses themes, which there's a ton of themes. And my favorite, as soon as I saw it, was the RP Switch theme. I'll have a link in the, in the description for all of the step-by-step -step of getting this all set up for you. You can choose between a dark and light theme and it just looks really cool and it works. It works with the built-in emulators and there's some configuration which we'll go over but some different themes require a lot more setup and this one is a little less intense. And so I like the way it looks. So let's get into it. So you can sideload the Pegasus APK file using the Mix app. That's how I installed it. That's just a file browser inside of Android that comes preloaded on the device. Uh, I'll have a link to the Pegasus APK in the description. So another thing you have to do is when you are loading in the themes for Pegasus, there's a couple different ways to do it. I found the easiest way is to actually plug in your Retroid into your computer and then use the Android's built-in file. You have to change the setting for it to be like a data mode and then you can access the device's internal memory, drag your theme into the appropriate folder and then your theme will be in there. It's kind of wonky the way you have to do that because you have to use the mouse the fake mouse touch and drag down. Like if you're familiar with any Android devices, you'll know, you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, obviously you need ROMs. However you, you wanna get your ROMs, it's up to you. You need a certain folder structure, which I have a link down in the description of a GitHub site where they basically have all of your folders in order. And these would go onto your SD card. It has all the folder structure and then also these metadata TXT files for inside of each folder, telling Pegasus which emulator to launch and what settings to use for that system. So when you go into Pegasus and add your folder, you'll actually add those metadata files. And then when you open a game, it uses that to route to the right emulator. 
and then when you quit the game, it'll bring you back, which is it's a pretty cool system. But in the description, I have a link to all those folders set up with those metadata files already configured for the default emulators on the system. It saved a ton of time from having to build out your own metadata files. Don't want to do that. Now, if you ever want to use some premium or paid or alternative emulators, all you have to do is change that metadata file. And there's a link in the description to a generator where you can pick which emulator you're using. It'll generate a new metadata file for you. You can just download. So it's down there. Now you have your Pegasus launcher, you have your RP switch theme, you have your ROMs and your metadata files inside those ROM folders. You're all set. If you just load it up right now, it'll work, but it won't look very pretty. It'll just be the names of the ROMs, not very beautiful. So the last step is probably the most aggravating out of all of them is scraping your artwork and having those artwork files in those ROM folders. A few things that you'll need. You'll need to register with a website called Screen Scraper, make an account, it's free. And then you'll wanna use the Scraper app. It's S-K-R-A-P-E-R. -E it's for Windows. There's a way to do it on Mac. I'll link to a video that explains it here. Now, a few things with this app. It takes hours. First of all, there's a lot of trial and error. I'm not gonna go into all the details, but specifically with the RP Switch app, all you need is the screenshot and the wheel art. So here's a video that explains walking through it. Some things that I ran into. Sometimes it would just delete all my files of things I've already scraped. So have backups in case that happens. I was doing it straight to the card. Don't do that. If you have a mirrored version of everything that's on your card, for your ROMs and your metadata files locally on your computer, run it through there and then copy them over to your card. Do that so you don't accidentally delete stuff. Second, there's a section to resize images. Every time I did that, I would get errors. So if as long as you're not pulling videos and everything, if you're just doing those two images, it's not gonna take that much space on your card. I don't suggest resizing the images. I just kept running into issues every time I tried to do that. So it's pretty cool how this works. Some themes on Pegasus pull all sorts of data, videos, descriptions, titles, publisher, release, like all sorts of stuff like that. So you can do that if you want. If you're using a different theme, you can pull, you know, video files, box art, 3D box art, all sorts of stuff like that. And you can play around with different things like that. For my theme, it's just the wheel, which is the logo of the game and the screenshot, which it stacks the logo on top of the screenshot for your each tile of your ROMs. And I think that works, it works for me. And I think it looks really cool. And it's nice to have that. I don't need videos. I have my RetroPie pre-configured with all the videos and all that stuff. This is my handheld option. So I think that's it. So I appreciate your patience with me. I'm doing a lot of stuff right now. Thanks for hanging out. I have a, I have a bunch of videos I'm working on right now. So. I'm gonna get back into the swing of things. If you are watching this and you don't subscribe, please subscribe. It helps keep me motivated to keep putting out videos. And then you'll know when I make a new video. If you like it, check it out. Follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, and join our Discord. We play games several times a week all together. We're working on a podcast that I'm inviting members of the Discord to be guests on. I'll have more information about that soon. So yeah, thanks. What do you think, what, what do you use for your emulators? Are, do you, are you into emulation? Do you have a Retroid Pocket 2? If not, buy one in the link below. It's a cool device. I really enjoy it. And uh, there's a bunch of different colors too. They, I got the, obviously the Game Boy themed one, the DMG original. They have some like GameCube looking ones. They have SNES looking ones, Famicom, Super Famicom. Let's do it. All right, peace out, cheers. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the flip side. Hopefully not in another two months. doing this for you.